Welcome to Slinging the Slang, the video podcast where we take a look at our slang, our idioms, our expressions, their origins, their meanings, everything from the controversial and funny <laughs> to the ridiculous. I'm Slangman David Burke, author of 30 books on idioms and slang. And I'm Monica Mauro, Director of Education for an English Language School in Southern California. And I love slang, David. I say that every week. I love slang. That's because you love slang. See? I just emphasized that for you. And that is why you are here. And we are glad that you are here joining us. Thank you for spending your time with us. If you're new to our show, let me explain what the format is. I know what we're going to be talking about. Monica does not have a clue. She has no idea. And we never know what's going to come out of her mouth, which is always exciting and terrifying. Sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> Most of the time. So welcome, English learners, English lovers, and our fan. You know, we're glad you're here. Okay, so um, I've got something very interesting that happened to tell you uh, this week, and I'm really excited about it. It's going to kind of open up our show a little bit. I went viral. Yes, I needed an IQL for it. I went viral on TikTok. Woo! Yes, oh, wow. With some teen slang. And I think what we should do here and there, and we'll start our show with this, I got five of the newest, up to the minute, new words that are being used as teen slang. It's it, it's just, it kind of just happened like within the last few days, some new words I'd never heard of. So Monica, I'm going to run these by you because this- yeah, I'm waiting all, with bated breath, David. Which is a good, good idiom, with bated breath, meaning great anticipation for you English learners out there. That's why we're here. We're here for you. Okay, so- I went viral on the word riz. Now, we did talk about that, I think. In, f uh, in fact, I was just on the news, live news, national, Wait, last whiz? week with the word, no, riz, R-I-Z-Z. -Z. Oh, R-I-Z-Z. -Z. Maybe we didn't talk about that. It went really? viral. It's the number one word teens are now using. Riz, riz. Monica. Well, it sounds. I well, well it you sounds said in a sentence for you. You've got riz, positive Monica. To me, it well, sounds you've, positive. You've got riz, Monica. Yeah, you've got um, riz. It sounds like a positive yes. adjective. Short to describe for what? Someone who's got a really good vibe. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You're getting there. It's short for uh, what word? You're riz? incredible. You're fantastic. Because you've got. It's, you've it's, got it's a shorter version for charisma. Oh right, charisma. You got riz, and if you got if you have winning riz, and I was told this on my TikTok live, I have W riz, winning riz. I've got lots of charisma. Winning riz, and if you are somebody who has winning riz, you are. And this is where I went viral. Teens are creating words to use the word riz within them. For example, You're rizorific. The Yes. Oh. Yes. Did you just <laughs> make that joking. one up? No, but that's exactly what they're doing. They're, they said, "I'm uh, uh, I'm Theodore Ru uh, Roosevelt. I'm the I'm the the Rizard of Oz. I'm a Risley Bear." So that's where teens are incredibly creative. So Riz is see. So you have W Riz just because you knew that. So well done. That's so easy to remember, too, because you know the word charisma. So I remember in the last segment we did, you said, oh, Mariah Carey was eating down and she leaving the crumbs. And I told you it was really hard for me to use that idiomatic expression because it, yeah. it was just difficult. But but right. riz is easy. Riz is easy. I, as my grandmother would call it, charisma. She spoke Yiddish. Char you got Charisma. Yeah, so Riz is, yeah, so yeah, the ch, charisma. So Riz would have been easier for her. Okay, then the uh, the number two word, a new word, Monica. I didn't know what they were telling me. When I go on social media in my in my live rooms, I ask the teens, "Tell me what's new. What's new?" Here's one, Ruka, R U C A, my Ruka, Ruka. R U C A. Ruka. It's not transparent as you would call it. In other words, it's not evident whatsoever. Do they stand for something? Do all the letters stand for words? I wondered about that. I asked them. They said no. I'll better tell you because it's impossible to know what this is. My girlfriend, Ruka. My Ruka. And if it's a guy, oh. like my like my buddy, my homie is my 
slime. My slime. <laughs> yeah, my slime. Which, okay, by the way, but I want to know where it came from. Why Ruka? Why slam? No, slime. Like slime. It's just you're oh. slimy. Slime. 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 And I have a love-hate relationship with that word because, as you may remember, I was on live news program once and the anchor did not read the description of me and said, we have a guy who writes books on slime. His name is Slime Man. Tell us about slime. Yeah. So I have a little love-hate relationship with that word. <laughs> Hello, so, Slime Man, David Burke. That's he funny. was so disappointed when I said, no, I, I don't write books on slime. I write books on slang. Well, you know, I'm thinking if you're a snail, then that would make sense. Like you're my slime. Make, yeah. Maybe that's what he, when he that's what he saw when he looked at me. No, um, I have no idea what why he didn't read. I mean, he had my book in his hand. Slime we need man. to ask the teens. We need to ask him that question. Why slime? Why Ruko? Right. I, you know what? I will do that today when I go back live. Yes, and we'll do that together also. Yeah. Ask them. I want to know, yeah, Dave. I, I don't know. And sometimes they don't know. Like when I asked them where Riz came from, most of them said, I don't know. And I'm thinking, well, probably because it's charisma. They're like, oh, yeah, good point. So sometimes they don't know. Here's the other one. Oh, Monica, I hope you didn't go out last night and get stomped. Stomped. I got well, totally but stomped. But I did have last a margarita, night. but it didn't stomp me. Okay. How did you know that? Uh, because of the context you put it in, David. Oh, oh, I'm that good. Oh, okay. So, so I get credit for it. So it's all because I gave you proper context. Yes, stomped is like what they used to say like in my mom's day back in the 30s, spifflicated. Yes, stomped is drunk. Yeah, I would have been stomped if I'd had three margaritas. Oh, I, I, yeah. I have a, if I just smell a margarita, I get stomped. Okay, here's a new word I did not know, and it's really popular because this is what was going on during this um, viral thing with my video. So do you know what, and then I'll explain it, what, <clears throat> okay, A-T, the word at, hyphen, I-N-G, a verb, atting. Do you know what atting is? Okay, you lost me at 18. Do it again. Say it okay. again. Okay, the, okay, A-T, the uh -huh. word at, uh -huh. hyphen, uh -huh. I-N-G, atting. I'm atting. It's a verb. To to at. Yeah, atting. Yeah, it means, okay, let me explain. So I noticed that in all my, um, on TikTok, all the teens were putting an at sign in front of other people's users usernames. Like at Monica, at this person, at that person. And I wrote back and said, okay, wait, I'm confused. What are you guys doing? I'm kind of new to TikTok. And they said, oh, we're adding you. I said, oh, great. What's that mean? They said, oh, atting is the at sign in front of a username. It's the same thing as tagging. It's atting. Oh, because oh that's the okay. At sign, right? Good to know. It's better that than, um, what's that called? Ampersand, not ampersand. Uh, I guess it is the at sign, the at sign. So yeah, that's called adding. And finally, and I heard this last night on a show, Monica, I'm watching this show all about teens called um, the Sex Lives of College Girls. It's a series. Have you heard of that? Oh, I've seen it. Yeah, yeah. I think it's on what? Uh, it's on Netflix or Amazon. Yeah, one, one, I, I don't know. I, I'm not the one who controls that. I, I just I just sit there and watch. So they use a lot of slang. And they said this one. I've heard this one before. It, and, and hopefully teens or everybody will say this about our show, that slinging the slang really slaps, slaps, slap. It slaps. It's got to be positive. It is positive. Yeah, it, we slap. It's really uh, cool. It's it's really entertaining. It's really the place it's, to be. It slaps. Well, 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 what else it can it be? Sla it slaps you in the face. and It's that good that it slaps. It's that good. Well, we were talking last week about, of course, all sorts of subjects, including colors in slang expressions and idioms. So we got a lot of emails from people asking questions about some colors in slang, what they mean, what the idiom means and where it came from. And we have- oh, Like when you're uh, feeling blue? Yes. Oh. Now, why do you think, why do we say that? Oh gosh, I don't blue. know. Blue to me is such a happy color. The sky is blue and- that Right, that's a, that's a really good point. Like, 
okay, sometimes you look up the origins and you get all sorts of different ideas and people have different opinions. So to uh, to feel blue, so you know the blues is sad music, it's sad jazz, but again, why blue? So it's a colder color blue as opposed to yellow. I'm feeling yellow, which is actually to be afraid. To be scared, I'm yellow, like a yellow-bellied sapsucker. What are you, yellow-bellied? So anyway, blue <laughs> means sad because it's kind of a cold color. So Carol- Yes, it is a cold color. It is, it is. a cold color, but, I yes. do love, but we do say, you know, we have a lot of expressions with blue. In fact, uh, oh, yeah, we actually have, a, a, in fact, we're going to get back to blue in a second. Uh, but we do have a question from Carol from the Philippines. Oh, the Philippines. The Mabuhai. Philippines. Mabuhai, which means welcome. Oh. Did you well, know, Monica? Good to know. In the Philippines, I may have mentioned this to you before about the word for mountain in the Philippines is boondock. That's where we get to live in the boondocks, to live far away in the mountains. Oh, the boondock. That's Filipino or Tagalog. Okay, so wow. Carol. Wow. Sorry, Carol, we just went off the beaten That's path cool. for a second. That's so cool. A good slang expression. Uh, why do you say to have a green thumb? And what exactly does it mean? Well, okay. Well, having a green thumb means you're good with plants. You could, you, they, they don't die on you like they do on me. I've killed a cactus before. So that, that no one. And it, it was probably plastic too, right? It was a, if it was plastic, then you're really yeah, in trouble. Yeah, it was a plastic cactus and I killed it. And um, uh, it's 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 a green thumb. It's green. You you have a way with the plants, and I would imagine green because plants are green, and your hands are in the dirt. And my, you know, my mother has a green thumb. She can grow anything. Then why didn't you inherit that? What what, what happened? You, you know, maybe because I really don't. You know, I just like to look at them. I, I don't necessarily want to get in the dirt with them. Are you maybe screaming at them? Grow, grow. Maybe that's what's... Well, I do talk to my plants outside on the deck. I do talk to them. Yes. Oh, I don't I, scream at them. I scream at my husband. I <laughs> reserve that for my husband. Okay. As, as, as it should be. <laughs> well, Carol, that was a very good question. And I think Monica answered it brilliantly with her gray matter. See how he did that with color? For the brain, gray matter. For those of you learning English, gray matter means brain. Um, and uh, thank you, Carol, from the Philippines. Thank you. Uh, thank salamat, you. which means thank you. See? I know my stuff. So international, David. Uh, but of course. Oh, speaking of but of course, Roger from Chicago. Probably Roger, but I'll say Roger because I want to sound international. Uh, Roger from Chicago. Roger from Chicago. Says, Chicago! Oh, yeah. You're going you're gonna to start. You're going to sing. Roger, does that happen to you every time you say... You're from Chicago to somebody, they break out into Chicago, Chicago, like I just did. Um, my friend's father was talking about his golden parachute. Okay. Do you know what that is, Monica? A golden parachute? Um, I'm hearing a begging parachute. No, golden, golden. Oh, gold. Oh, his golden parachute. Yes, his golden parachute. Um, a golden parachute. It, it's his luck, his... Um, Interesting. You know, I've heard this very seldom. I've, I've, yeah, yeah, I've but, heard it, but it not. it's not super common. Because you were not laid off. If you get laid off, you, know, you lose your job. They give you a goal. If you're an executive, they give you a golden parachute. That means they enable you to land in that new fired position in a really nice way by giving you lots of money and lots of benefits and lots of perks. That's oh, a golden parachute. No. So a lot of people are like, yeah, sure. Lay me off as long as I get a good golden parachute. Oh, well, good to know. Well, it kind of had something to do with good luck. I mean, you know, getting a promotion and getting more money is obviously yeah, fortunate. That, But I don't know if I'd want a gold, a golden parachute. That's kind of, he that's heavy. I mean, you're going to hit the ground, right, right? You know that. Yeah, that wouldn't work. It's interesting. They say golden parachute when my visual is not so pretty. Uh, so thank you very much, Roger from Chicago, um, Eduardo from Mexico. Ah, oh, hola, Eduardo. <gasps> hola. Que onda? Que hubo? Uh, what does it mean when you get your pink slip? Oh, I hope oh. That, I hope you didn't get one. Um, and why? Yeah, you call not it a good. Pink slip? Mm, okay. Um, see ya. Yeah, wouldn't want to be you. Yeah, that's a pink slip. 
Okay, Monica, why is and that's when you get fired? Why is it pink? You know, here's here's what I envision when people say that we use that term, the pink slip. Uh-huh. I think of those pink message, those, yeah, you know, me those too. old tablets from a long time ago, and they were pink, and you, you mean the small would ones. call. Oh yes, okay, yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, you would you would write who called to who, what was the message. That's so right, I'm yeah. just thinking that's why they call it a pink slip. But I I mean that's just what I envision. That's just Monica's own uh response. Conjecture. Yes, Conjecture is yes. by Monica. Actually, it's because the color pink sticks out from all the other uh, intra office mail. So you might not notice it if it was just a white piece of paper, but we want you to notice that. So as you're going through the mail, whoa, uh-oh, pink. So it sticks out. It stands out. So it you don't, stands out. You don't overlook okay. it. Good question, Eduardo from Mexico. Um, wow, we have a lot of questions about colors. Kelly from Nebraska. Um, oh, yeah, this is interesting. I've heard blue collar and white collar worker often explain. Um, Can we explain okay. blue collar? What's, what's a blue collar worker? What's okay. white collar? Blue, blue collar are people that um, who uh, do not work in. Uh, in an office, they might work. They might be a painter, a construction worker, so physical um, laborer. Yeah, very physical labor. Uh-huh. Um, and then white collar, or or you, normally it's associated with people that work in an office. You know, you wear the white shirt with the tie, and you work with computers or exactly. Whatever. So it really makes sense. I mean, it, it's a it's a very again transparent, as Monica would say. It kind of makes sense, right? So. Good question, Kelly from Nebraska. Now you'll know what that means. Um, if you get offered a white collar job, you'll know what that is. Well, it's uh, assuming that most blue collar workers wear like chambray shirts, which is not true. A chambray shirt? What's a chambray shirt? Um, it looks kind of like a a it's a, like a light denim shirt. You know? That, it's, oh it's, yeah, that's chambray. Oh, that's chambray. I'd never heard of that before. Yeah, it's a, they're they're you know kind of the color of my jean jacket. It's not it's not actual denim. It's like a lighter fabric, but it's kind of denim ish. And Monica, it's a chambray shirt. You know your drip. You know your drip. That means clothing for all of yeah, all of you non teens out there. Yes, all Monica, those years in retail, always looking drippy, which is very, which is actually a good thing. Um, we have Lauren. I hope I'm saying it right. Lauren. Oh, yeah, I'm definitely saying it right. From Long Island. So it is oh, Lauren. From Long Lauren Island. from Long Island. New York. New York. I, I, have you, Lauren, have you ever had, of course you have, the hot dogs on the corner? Monica, have you ever tried the hot, hot dogs on the corners, uh, corner vendors in New York? I have. They're smothered with a red, uh, like caramelized onions. Uh, See, we're back to food. Okay. Uh, we'll we'll oh, try to stay God. focused. And I'm so hungry right uh, me now. Me too. David. I know. When are we not? I know. Sorry, Lauren. We're, but we, here we're, in California, we eat about... smart dogs. Plant-based smart... hot dogs. Oh, yeah. Like tofurkey. And, uh, not quite the same. Yeah. No, I, I like, I'm sorry, hot dog, a hot dog. I mean, the foot-long hot dogs. That's why I go to Dodger Stadium. The only reason I go to Dodger Stadium is not to watch the game. It's for the hot dogs and the malts. Don't get me started. What's the name of this place? Uh, Dodger Stadium. Oh, Dodger Stadium, of course. That's the oh. only place I'll eat a real hot dog. Oh, yeah, because that's the real thing. The hot dog you know, um, kind of comes off the bun. And they've got the, the onion grinder. You grind, and the onions pop out. Oh. And the malteds, David, oh, the, the malteds. Malt- with the the carnation spoon. malteds. And they <laughs> the, last forever. That's the, huge. With a wooden spoon, right? Yes. And you keep going around the outside, out, outside, outside, and you hold yes. on to it so it melts on the outside. Uh, sorry, Lauren, we're busy talking about food. So anyway, we're always hungry. Sorry, Lauren. Um, we really went off the beaten path there, David. Oh, wow. Uh, the second time we use that expression for all of you English learners, it means we went <laughs> off the subject. Um, okay, what did you want to know, Lauren? Uh, oh, I heard of a black eye. Okay. Uh, I've heard it also called a shiner, which is more popular, a black eye. Or a shiner. Or a shiner, a black eye. Yeah, black eye. Yeah. I guess we that's interesting. We say we say black eye, but we say black and blue for a bruise. You would never say, Oh, I got a black. You say I've got a black and blue on my arm, right? I, all I've ever heard is I, I have heard, oh, he's got a shiner. It's it's kind of old school. Um I think but, so too. But when somebody gets hit or hits themselves and they get a uh, you know, a bruise under their eye. I've only heard it 
known as a black eye. I think maybe an older person might say, wow, that's some shiner you got there. I think we know it's old slang, but we use it because it's still fun. But yeah, that's what I I guess kind of both. Lauren, black eye. Monica says black eye. I think maybe I would say, yeah, black eye, number one, then shiner, number two. Uh, Kelly from Kansas. We've got a few more here. Kelly from Kansas. What does it mean to get blackballed? And what's its origin? Oh, that's interesting. To get blackballed. Do you know where that comes from to get blackballed? Well, I actually it's kind do of know. to get canceled, right? Yeah, yeah. You got blackballed. To, to like, get put on a, to get blacklisted. To yes, exactly. You can't yeah. come into our party. You've been blackballed. But why blackballed? Where is the origin, or what is the origin? I actually know what the origin is. I'm thinking of the wrecking ball. You know, a big oh. wrecking ball <laughs> that's coming through and just wrecking. Your whole very uh, creative, very visual, love it, but no, eh, that's actually not it. Back in the 17th century, when you would vote, instead of putting in a ballot, you put in either a white ball or a black ball to to tell them that I'm not, I am opposed to that candidate. White ball or black ball? Wow, I wonder how many balls they had to have. You gotta, you gotta have some balls. That's for another show. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> See, at least we can't get um, sh- shadow banned on our own show, can we? Yes. Um, I will not. I'm not the- touching that. No, I will not give you the pink slip for saying that. Um, wow. Thank you. Uh, Sh- See, Shelly, what you what you just caused, Shelly from Kansas. Um, okay, and we have Aaron. Okay, uh, Aaron, I got to talk about your name first. I'm from Los Angeles. So is Monica. Monica, how do you pronounce? A A R O N. Aaron. How do you pronounce E R I N? Aaron. Same way, right? Aaron. Aaron. Same way. Same thing, right? Same sound. No. No. Okay. Aaron. A- Aaron. Aaron. I'm not hearing it. Like my. I, you know, I know, but 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 I'm feeling it in my mouth. When I say Aaron, I'm opening my mouth more. Aaron? And when I say Aaron, my mouth is um, uh, more in a smile. See, my mom would say Aaron for a guy, Aaron and Aaron. Aaron and Aaron. Yeah, I totally can hear the difference. Yeah, for that one, I can. Potato, potato. And I have terrible oh, hearing. I, I know, but, but I, you're doing better than I am. Um, well, okay. Aaron from, Aaron from Seattle, what does it mean to come out of the blue? All right, to, that came that came out of the blue, out of the sky, out of the sky. That's simple. That's transparent. That one is pretty evident, but it's a good expression, and we do use it. It's kind of like um, and I don't really know what this is, uh, but I guess it's some kind of a astronomical phenomenon. Once in a blue moon. Oh right, yeah. I've never seen an actual blue moon, but it sounds beautiful it sounds and it must not happen very often (laughs) i guess it doesn't because it only happens what how often not very often monica i just set you up it happens once in a once in a in a blue moon oh monica retake okay (laughs) Uh, (laughs) with the program i'll I'll give you a, a, a pass on that one oh yeah our last one comes from ernesto from toronto oh toronto eh Toronto. We say Toronto, right, Monica? In LA, we say Toronto. We don't say Toronto, do we? Well, tr- in Toronto, in Toronto, in, Toronto. In Tor- well, tr- they say Toronto. We say Toronto. You know, we don't our T's. We kind of just like mm, we like race through T's. Um, oh yeah, well, we race through everything. I mean, I mean, my Toronto. Last- I guess we say Toronto. Yeah, I'm always mentioning that on my live broadcast to English learners that we just slur everything together. Oh, yeah. Um, okay, so you are asking the question, Ernesto from Toronto, why do you say to pass with flying colors? Oh, that's a really cool one. I love that one. Okay, so, I, you know, flying colors. Well, that that means you did it beautifully. You you yes, it passed does. with flying colors. You did very well. Um, but but fl- why flying colors? I, I don't know, maybe flags? Of different colors. I am very, very impressed, Monica, because you are absolutely right. Here's why. Because I think it was... uh, I'd love to be right. I know. I I hate it. But okay. I think maybe two, three hundred years ago, maybe more, 
when ships would come back from their their journeys, if they were successful in their mission, they would be flying colorful flags. If the oh, flags were down, they didn't succeed. So not so good. Come, in, come into port, but flying colors means you were successful. So that that is awesome. And on that note, because I'm going to do a really great segue here, Monica and I hope that the rest of your week goes with flying colors that you don't get any pink slips. Um, and so what else did we say? Uh, you don't get blackballed from any parties. Uh, I wrote down. And wonderful the- things happen out of the blue. Uh, exactly. Yeah. What what she said. Exactly. Um, we want to thank you so much for sharing your time with us. We will be back again next week with more Slinging the Slang. I am David Burke. And if you'd like to learn how we really speak and take a deeper dive into that, please take a look at my slang books at slangman.com. And speaking of deeper dive, Monica. And I'm Monica Mauro. And please, we hope that you will join us next time as we take another deep dive into the ever-growing ever-changing world of slang and does it ever change every second it already probably just now changed because we were talking about it so we'll see you next week and thank you so much we'll see you next time and we will be slinging slinging the slang slang. more with you next time thanks so much for being here thank you Bye. Bye. bye